Let's see. I love it. Let's see if I can get it on the first try or if the, the, the compression bypass is in the wrong position. There we go! So biodiesel, eh? <laughs> yep. I guess this is a water heater. This is this is a um, re re repurposed antique electric water heater, repurposed to be a miniature tabletop biodiesel reactor. Okay. Where uh, I can process five gallons of vegetable oil with a gallon of methanol and a bit of potassium hydroxide into uh, biodiesel and hmm. glycerin byproduct. Okay. That will mix for two hours, settle for 12, and the, after the 12 hours, it'll, the glycerin will separate, fall to the bottom. I collect that, I put that to the side for other uses, and then I take the biodiesel on the top, and I do, uh, do some cleaning up processes to it so I can just pour it right into yeah. uh, most any diesel engine. It, is, it was a bit of a cold morning this morning, so the white layer sitting between is slightly congealed biodiesel. Okay. Um, yeah, biodiesel doesn't have as good a cold weather properties as regular diesel, but just cutting biodiesel with 10% um, diesel fuel or kerosene uh, will put it up to, for the most part, will let you burn it all through winter. Okay, so it's been a number of years since I've heard about biodiesel and stuff yeah. like that, so... What, uh, what do you start by putting, uh, what do you put in it first? So I, the chemical reaction I start with, I start with the vegetable oil that I collect from restaurants. Okay, so vegetable oil. That is a triglycerin molecule. Uh, methanol is my re gonna be my reactant, my other reactant. Potassium hydroxide is my catalyst. So I guess since these are, and, and sorry for wanting more detail about this, but so I guess these, you need a lot less ratio of this for this, right? Like, because it's a reactant. I'm gonna get to this. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but basically, so what happens is the tri the vegetable oil triglycerin molecule here, I need a little bit of potassium hydroxide to break the bonds one, two, three. Okay. And then the methanol takes the place of the glycerin at the ends. Okay. For for uh, for the chem the chem the simple chemistry involved in this, I need 20% methanol to my volume of, of vegetable oil I'm starting out with. Okay. After the conversion, after the, the chemical reaction takes place, I will normally get 90 to 95 percent biodiesel compared to my starting vegetable oil. Okay. Then the uh, and then the rest of the volume goes to the glycerin. So does the methanol end up in the biodiesel? The methanol ends up chemically bonded in the methanol okay. ends up chemically in the biodiesel. So it gets it, so it gets used up. Yeah. Uh, Actually, how hard is it to get the methanol? Uh, I buy it from a chemical supplier. Okay. It's not too hard. I'm uh, my farm because I, I do this through my farm. I have a business account. With oh, okay. A supplier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually the center point for my county's uh, biodiesel group for getting the chemicals because I oh, okay. had a business yeah, account. Yeah, yeah. And I had because it's a farm. I've got mm -hmm. forklifts and other equipment to unload and load up other people. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm actually the last holdout for my county now. Oh wow. <laughs> so. No, it's uh, it's hard work. It's mm -hmm. it is time consuming, but I do it at the doing it at the scale for farming. I'm able to in, have the right amount of time invested yeah. in it to make it worthwhile. Large and, batches and yeah. stuff like that. And I'm I'm mainly here just to educate people mm -hmm. on it. You know, some people may want to get involved in it. Just some to show that there's might options. Not want to be involved, and they might want to go EV when they find out yeah. the time investment. I have a lot of legacy equipment on my farm though so i'm i went with the biodiesel route mm -hmm. uh, i'm not i'm not in the in the position to be bought swapping my tractors over to electric yeah obviously. yeah and uh and hydrogen burns a little too hot and then wood gas is a mess <laughs> wood gas is actually coincidentally something i'm looking up really okay uh, but wood gas looks like it will be best for me for irrigation pumps okay i can set up a wood gasifier i can in the morning i can start up my wood gasifier I can start up the engine that, mm -hmm. that runs the irrigation pump and I can let that run through the day. That way I don't have to store wood gas. Uh, yeah, I don't imagine being able to use wood gas in a vehicle situation. Yeah, because having to have the, the, being able to have this run, make your biodiesel and then store it is so much easier than yeah. having to have your, your yeah. wood gas being it, produced. It's also, there's also another system called uh, heated vegetable oil. Oh, I never heard of that. a two tank system on your vehicle 
you, you start your engine on diesel fuel, you take the engine heat that builds up, you use that to heat the vegetable oil that thins it out, you switch over to running the, veg, the heated vegetable oil, and then before you shut down again, you have to switch back to diesel fuel so that the diesel cleans fuel it out. Your injectors and can, are ready for startup. So I have yeah. high schoolers. I have a lot of lot of people that I do not trust that make that of their routine when they're using equipment. Hmm. So I by making biodiesel, I'm handling all the technical aspects, and they can just use the vehicles as they normally would. Yeah. So with the uh, what did you call it? The the evaporated or what was the other method? Heated vegetable oil. Heated vegetable yeah. oil. Sorry, I have no, terrible no words. Um, I'm a visual person. Yeah. The heated vegetable oil. So you, you basically you can use it directly without ha without having to uh, process it. You can use heated vegetable oil directly without having to process it, but it requires more preheat of the engine. It yeah. requires more equipment on the vehicle. Oh, okay. You can. It's easy. It's somewhat easy to put a second fuel tank in a car. Uh, it's fairly easy to put a second fuel tank in a, mm -hmm. in a pickup truck. Yeah, it's getting tight when you get on a tractor, though. There's the, the tractors mm -hmm. do not have a lot of empty space. They're actually yeah. they're, tractors generally are easy to work on. Because yeah, everything's right there and it's at chest level, so you can walk up right to it. Yeah, I, I felt that with some tractors. They, yeah, they're designed that way for a reason, and adding something gets really difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But yeah, biodiesel, I, I can checked all my options and biodiesel mm -hmm. seemed like the best path for me to go for my farm. For so reasons. Um, just to keep asking questions because you know a lot about this. So I guess the reason why you want to break this down is because it's too viscous. Yep. And you want to make yep. it more liquidy. Yep. Literally the only, Okay. this is vegetable oil and you can just push yep. that back and forth and just compare it to the bio, this biodiesel sample. Feels like oil. And then this is like. Much thinner, much yeah. closer to diesel fuel. The, the, Not quite, yep. but. The, the fuel it pumps and fuel mm -hmm. injectors on a diesel engine can handle that no problem. So it is a viscosity thing. And I, yeah. I assume, do you have to filter out any impurities before you put it in there? Uh, when I collect the vegetable oil, it gets fed through a window screen filter. Okay. Just something to take the junk out. It gets settled for a day or two to let any water yeah. that might be transported in there fall to the bottom. Uh, the water will get drained off. And then any particles that go through uh, the that 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 go through the window screen that are still immersed tend to fall into the glycerin layer okay after the reaction is completely done and i'm left with the finished product then i run it through uh okay i was going to ask about that yeah fuel filters that mm -hmm. we all know if i ran it earlier i'd be going through these filters twice a batch. yeah so then last question the stuff that you filter out, what did you say? It's the glycerin layer? The glycerin layer. So the glycerin layer, have you found any uses for that? Or uh, can you compost it so or the, burn it? It is biodegradable. The the, the, the ever-present backup plan is I can just compost it in my manure pit and my compost yeah. pile. Uh, but if I process it to get any residual methanol out and I balance pH, I have used it as an animal feed supplement. I've mixed oh. it with animal grain. Okay. Uh, they won't they won't drink or eat it directly. But yeah. If you mix it with grain, it's similar to a sweet feed. It is actually a sugar. Okay. You'll find um, human food grade glycerin in uh, granola packaged granola bars, for instance. It's it's a moistener for okay. stuff like that. Uh, other than that, I'm also exploring. Uh, just flat out making a furnace that can burn it for heat. Yeah. You know? Cause, so it is flammable. Oh, it's it's. It's a lot of energy very in it. Stable, flammable, actually. It, okay. You know, I've I've used it to start uh, camping fires. Okay. Where I just soak burlap in it, so it's a big giant. Yeah. Thing. It, you could put a match out in it. Same with diesel fuel. You could put a match out in glycerin. It's not that flammable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's if you get it on a wick, like a burlap sack mm -hmm. or a normal cloth wick, it'll burn. Somewhere it'll has a boundary smoke. layer that it can burn. Yeah. yeah. Um. Other than that, you can also feed it to an anaerobic digester to get methane. Mm -hmm. It's it is biodegradable, so an anaerobic digester will eat. If you have a landfill that has those, you okay. can bring your stuff there. And then actually, when you're doing that, the residual methanol, residual methanol, methanol is an environmental hazard, but it's mostly an air hazard. Uh, methanol in liquid form, methanol below a certain percentage is very biodegradable. Lots of microbes mm. will chew that up. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So then, is this a pump? This is just a cheap pump. That, okay. that pump came from Northern Tool. Is that for pumping in or pumping out? Or just circulating? Circulating. This, Cir is, oh, this actually does okay. everything. 
Uh, so I can can use this with the with the way the valves are set up and the T's. You can use this pump to fill. Okay. Um, yeah, because you could shut that off, yeah. open that up, yep. it's pumping in. And then that's also I let that circulate, and that's how I actually will introduce. I, I scale, had to scale down for this for this trip, but I could have a hose set up where I pull in the methanol potassium hydroxide solution, or I actually have a uh, elbow with a funnel there, and I just mm -hmm. pour it directly in. Uh, let it mix, and then when I want to want to get when I want to empty the tank, I just close this off. I open this up and I just put it into whatever collecting vessel I have. Well, that is really cool. Thank you very much yep. for showing this. Yep. Well, I'll just find other images mm -hmm. online. Yeah, yeah. This is an opened, uh, open algae farm. This is mm -hmm. a closed loop algae farm. I would think about making one kind of like that, small scale. What's nice about the algae farms is you can situate them in uh, fields, in, in areas where conventional agriculture doesn't work. Yeah. That way, your algae farm does not displace food production. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important thing a lot of people miss. Yeah. We might have a food surplus in America, but we might not always, and other places in the world don't. It's so, all, it, it's a, it's a, so, yeah, you, know, you may want to make, you may want to find some part of the world that doesn't, that has tight food, that has tight, tighter food production, mm -hmm. but still has land that you could set up an algae farm on. Nice. Because like I said, the closed loop ones, you don't have to worry about evaporative loss then. Uh, that's a good point, yeah. No. <laughs> that's very cool. Honestly, some of them are sentimental. A lot of people don't get sentimentality for like equipment, but... Well, you know, I don't know. Like it's out, a nice out, big piece of iron and it does, it does your work. I don't know. Out in Illinois, people are really sentimental about their tractors. <laughs> Maybe not out here, okay. but... Yeah, out there they really I'm like him. Surprised. Yeah. Surprise. Although a lot of people I know are go who think Jacktown's this week. You know what that that No, no. Jacktown's like the the Pennsylvania uh it, it's this big antique equipment um uh, um uh, uh swap meet. Swap oh, okay. Meet. Yeah. Nice. And I keep getting told I should go there and I I keep having to tell people it's October. I barely made it to this event. Yeah. I barely I had to remind people I haven't had a vacation. You're busy. Oh, <laughs> you are so I, busy right I, now. I, no, I told people like yeah, you know, I haven't yeah. had a vacation in like a year and a half, right? So are you able to ride uh, to drive that uh, run that thing today for a demonstration? Right now, we okay. Do, we can do it right now. Okay. If you're recording. Yeah, I'm this recording. Is, this is a very cheap. This is probably one of the cheapest new diesel yeah. engines you can get. They're sold on uh, eBay and Amazon. It's two hundred fifty dollars shipped. Mind if I just grab the biodiesel bottle to, to show it in the video? Yeah. So this is actually a really good educational engine as well because it's got the bare min minimum number of parts. Yeah. I should have this bolted to something, but. <laughs> Let me, let's see if I can get it on the first try or if the, the, the compression bypass is in the wrong position. There we go! engine for uh, little for farm equipment or even educational yeah this yeah a great like classroom tool to tear apart oh yeah to see because it's it has the bare minimum number of parts on it uh, it's also good to tear apart because while it is well machined uh, some some reviewers on YouTube found that while it is well machined it can be really poorly assembled with Torx with yeah. bolts out of torque spec and metal filings in mm -hmm. the cylinder. Yeah. So if you know how to do that, then I do recommend these engines, although I've only put about five hours on this so far. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, take that as a five-hour review. 